Hey you guys, it's Rachel here with Sense of Tempo County Corso. So it's um it's been raining all day. Well not all day, that's that's a lie. But it's been raining today. It's very windy and I can't find my mic. And it wasn't even that windy, but of course now it is that I'm recording. And that's fine. Um I'm in the trees here, hopefully trying to avoid the majority of it. Um everyone seems to be doing pretty good. Um, we just had a moment where Gina got in some trouble because she has a tendency to get a little possessive over sticks and things. And so um, I kind of got on to her a little bit and the whole pack kind of gave her a correction. So she's doing all right. Um, but as you can see, that tail is still straight up. Doesn't mean she's dominant. <clears throat> means that she gets too excited um, over stuff like this, which honestly, velocity was the same way. Um, not... Um, not not like that anymore, but she used to be pretty bad. So, what's funny is that I literally started recording because I was like, oh, it's not so windy. And then now all of a sudden, it's literally like crazy wind. So it's pretty ridiculous. Um, but I'm going to, like I said, keep trying to stay out of it the best I can. And if I need to, I'll buy another mic. If I can't find my old one. <clears throat> so... So anyway, so yeah, so everyone's doing good. Mm, I've got everyone out here, actually. I've got Atari in there. Um, Cashmere's over by the side. Giovanni is right there. We've got Gina right here. And then I'm pretty sure it's Velocity right there. So yeah. Preacher, Gina, Admiral. And, um, Batista. Oh, here we go. Belladonna's right here, actually. So that means... Okay, there she goes. There's, there's Velocity. I've really been having to keep an eye on them. I did some work, um, before I even started filming. Just trying to make sure everybody understood that they're going to behave themselves. And I think I'm going to start doing that before I start recording. Is just kind of spending about... 10 to 15 minutes really working with them and making sure that everybody is on point before I start recording because they oftentimes will try to um, take advantage of my, um, you know, the fact that I'm distracted by filming. <clears throat> so hopefully this new method will really go far in, um, you know, in making sure that everybody's minding themselves and I'm not having to spend a ton of time doing correction. Kashmir, ah, back over here, now. Kashmir, what'd I say? Move it right now, move over here, now. So I've been doing this thing where if they don't listen, I really start coming up, I really get urgent, really start moving up on them, having a very low tolerance for um, the stubborn, uh, you know, I'm gonna do it on my time thing, I'm not doing that anymore. You do what you're told when you're told to do it immediately. And it's just because I have so many dogs that I really need that kind of immediate response. So see that? So Cashmere walked over, had her tail up, and um, was basically like, you're going to give me that stick. Preacher rolled over and let her have it. And then you know what she did? She walked over here and she dropped it. She didn't even want it. She's just being a dominant female walking up and taking people's stuff. That's, that's Cashmere for you. Always reinforcing her status. You know, always. And that's one of the things why, like, I always suggest to people when you have a, you know, like a dog or two, whatever. When you're playing with them, every now and then, just out of nowhere, just run up and just put them in submissive posture. Not as an, um, not as an, a correction, just as a, hey, I just want you to lay down on your side. And um, it goes a long way towards, you know, kind of maintaining your status as the alpha. And it doesn't have to be this... Um, big thing. I mean, I will say that if your dog doesn't do that for you, then you obviously know that there's a problem there. The dog should, just like Preacher just did, um, willingly give up submission for the alpha. Now, is she truly the alpha over him? 
I mean, come on. If he really wanted to hurt her, you know, he could. But it, it to him and, like, most husbands, it's not even worth it. You know what I mean? Like, you have to choose your battles. And he, it's nothing to him to let her think that she's running the show, you know. And he's lazy. He doesn't want to run the show anyway. He'd much rather let her do it, and he'll back her up when necessary. And that's exactly what he does for those that watch and, and really know. Um, but, yeah, everyone's doing really good, man. I'm very, very, very happy about it. I've been working really hard um, since I've been back on just really... Um, <clears throat> reinstilling, you know, their house training. Cause that really wasn't, um, you know, those, those schedules were not minded. And so I had some work whenever I got back of really kind of reinstilling that um, back into them and we're good on that. And, um, and also just the, the general obedience is much better. So even with Batista, um, as you can see, he's here, he's not trying to sneak off and, um, He's just being much better. The collar has really worked wonders. I don't have it on him right now because he hasn't been needing it. So, um, so anyway, so my word has been enough. If it's not, we'll put it back on, but it's, it's been good. Um, so yeah, everyone's doing really well. Atari is actually looking really good now. Finally, you can't even see the rib any or the, the hip bone anymore. Finally got that weight put back on her. So she should actually start putting on some weight and growing now that she's caught back up again. Because she just wasn't growing because she just, her body was just trying to catch back up again. So, she finally looks, you know, normal again. Um, so, Cashmere, what are you doing? Let's go, now, move it. So, not an immediate, Cashmere, what did I say? Move it right now. She has morning sickness, I haven't fed them yet. Get over here now, let's go, move it. She's eating grass because her stomach's probably upset. So when I'm done filming this, I'll go ahead and I'll take them inside and feed them. But, um, but because of the way that they had kind of been taking advantage, like I said, I've just been really focusing on, you know, giving them one try. If they don't, I move over. I, I enforce myself. And, um, and that is honestly the best way to do it anyway. I mean, all of us are, you know, we're doing stuff and structure. Um, we're doing stuff. We got our lives going on and I think all of us have our issues or whatever. And so sometimes it's hard when you've had a long day or whatever it is to, to have the energy to like, you know, get up and really enforce um, your word whenever you've told a dog to do something. But it is essential because every time you let them get away with something, that's just, you know, you're teaching them that that they can do that. You know what I mean? Like if you, if it takes you three times to actually get up and do something, then they know they have three times that they don't have to listen to you. And so it's really important, um, no matter how tired you are, that you really try, if you say something and they don't do it, then you need to step up and you need to make them do it. Um, that's just kind of the way that you're going to get the best training. Otherwise you're going to get a dog that listens, but you know, like listens on their time, which honestly is a lot like how my dogs have been. Cause that's how I've been. And that's my fault. I need to be better about my correction, um, timing and not let them not, not consistently repeat myself. And, um, it's something I could get away with. I could be a little bit lazier about whenever I just had one or two dogs, it wasn't a big deal. But when you have more dogs, then it actually becomes a big deal. You need them to, respond on time when they're told because you know it's it's it is so um much work in general that that it makes sense to limit the amount of work by ensuring that the dogs are actually responding when they're being spoken to <clears throat> so anyway you got a velocity you get a girl you get a girl you get that velocity you skip that tree you skip that tree velocity you skid it what's up belladonna What's up, Belladonna? What's up, Belladonna? You're a pretty girl. Yes, you are. Yes, you're a pretty girl. Cashmere, don't give her that look. Well, she's on a man. Cashmere's on a warpath. I'll tell you what. I've been spending a lot of time putting her in the submissive posture. Because I'll tell you what. Just because you're pregnant doesn't mean you get to be a tyrant. So, she's all about it right now. She's like queen. She's like head of my game. And I wouldn't be surprised if it does have a little bit to do with the fact that Blondie is pregnant, you know what I mean? I, I'm pretty sure she is, and I think that that probably has um, some effect on why she did that. So look at that. So Belladonna just peed. This is how dominant she is. Watch her. She's going to pee over her pee. Yep. 
Good Lord, man. She is really... You! You're on a rampage. You think I don't know what you're up to? Cashmere, you think I don't know what you're up to? Hey, look at me. Psh! Watch your mouth. You hear me? Watch your mouth. Don't you be getting in nobody. You understand me? Don't you be doing it. Mind your manners. Yeah, I see you, girl. Yeah, I see you. She's like, look how powerful I am. Cashmere, quit it. Look how I shake it. <clears throat> yeah, I see you. See, watch now. I'm going to be the dominant. Yeah. Give me this, and you get down. Psh. That's my way of, of, of asserting my authority. Psh. Quit. Psh. You let her take it. Well, she hated that. She hated that. She was like, how dare you? How dare you take a stick within my vicinity? Yeah, that's the level. She's watching me, waiting to get up. But she hasn't given me submission yet. Psh. Slightly ignoring me. I'm going to move that out of her face. No. We'll just make her wait. Ah, no. You best chill out. She's waiting to get up. You see how she's just looking at me? Right now she's just going through the motions. Another indication is that foot like that, when they're not quite listening to you, they have their foot just ready to go. And one of the things I'll do is I'll move that foot back so that they have to actually sit there and they're not in a position to just hop right back up. No, cashmere. I said no, leave it be. I don't want her messing with stuff. I want her focusing on... No, I said. I want her focusing on me, not sitting around playing with a rock. I want the respect. Psh. Put your head back down. Mind your business. I'm talking to you. So now she's getting a little bit better about it. A little bit more serious. Psh. Ah. A little bit more respectful. So now she's gazing off into the distance. That's one of the things that I look for. You'll start to see her eyes soften just a little bit. She's relaxing. Now I'm going to let her up. up. All right, Kashmir, you're good. Here's your stick. Now behave yourself. Look how pretty. You're pretty girl. Yes, you are. Yes, you are. I was talking about you. You're a pretty girl. Velocity's keeping an eye on the pups. With Gina over there, Gina has a tendency to get a little too excited. Um, shh, Gina, chill out. Goes with her tail up. See, if, um, Belladonna's watching her. We got some action over here. Giovanni. What you up to, boy? Giovanni. Hey, shh. what you doing? What you doing, boy? He's like, whatever, Ma. I don't got to listen to you. Cutie patootie. I tell you what, though, Atari, she's a tough girl. She really don't need no help most of the time. Hey, pretty girl. Yeah, Belladonna's big, man. I tell you what, I think she's even slightly, might be slightly taller than Velocity at this point. And she's young. Her tail stalk is really thick, too, which is a good sign. Um... <clears throat> Gina, 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 you're a good girl, you're a good girl, you're a good girl, oh god, Belladonna, rude, she's like, actually, no, how about you don't pet her and you pet me instead, <laughs> so anyway, yeah, everyone's doing really good though, you're a good girl, you're a good girl, yeah, I know, yeah, see, see how excited she gets, she wants to like nibble my hands, look at the tail, that level of excitement is too high. Um, see, now she wanted to jump on me whenever I ignored her. I had to give her a correction. You don't, it's not a good idea to be super affectionate to dogs that are like that. You need to teach them to be calm. So if she gets, if, if you notice that you have a dog that's prone to excitement and they get in trouble when they're excited, then you need to do things to prevent them from getting too excited. And that may mean 
not being as affectionate as you would like to be because it's not in their best interest. And with her, and it used to be with Velocity, that's what I used to have to do. Velocity's fine now, but it used to be you just couldn't or she would get way too excited. Shh. Both of you mind your manners. Shh. Cashmere. Back off. Don't take it serious. So Velocity can push her luck sometimes, but she's not like... It's not the same as, like, another dog. Like, it's just, um, Velocity. Velocity's just a little weird, if, if you will. Shh, Velocity, quit being possessive over the stick. Psh, drop it. Now. Give me that stick. No. Cashmere, come. I'm gonna give it to Cashmere. Specifically to teach Velocity a lesson that if you're gonna get possessive over stuff, I'm gonna take it from you. You see? So Kashmir gave her a correction for trying to take it back. Velocity respected it and backed off. Ah, uh -uh. Giovanni, where are you going? Psh. No. Giovanni! No. Back over here. Good boy. So anyway, yeah. He may need to go number two, but I don't want him slinking off. Anyway, I'm going to get them inside and feed them. Um... So I hope you guys are having a great day, and I'll talk at you later. Bye!